For nearly 50 years, Oregon's Interstate 5 Willamette River Bridge in Eugene Springfield has served as a vital link in West Coast interstate transportation. But in 2002, the bridge started showing its age. During a routine inspection, engineers from the Oregon Department of Transportation identified shear cracks and determined that the bridge needed to be replaced. To begin, crews built a massive work bridge, then demolished the original bridge. Next, they began to build the foundation of the new bridge by digging down to competent rock to install drill shafts. They topped these with shaft caps, built arch rib frames, placed the rebar frames, and started pouring concrete. Before any of this work took place, surveyors had masterminded the dimensions of the new structure, taking measurements and setting plot points around the old Willamette River Bridge. ODOT's consultant, OBEC engineers, led by surveyor Jim Colton, analyzed the site using global positioning systems, laser levels, and computer plotting software. Such technology allows surveyors to capture lots of information easily and quickly. Whereas in the past, you'd have to handwrite all those notes, you'd bring those notes into the office, manually calculate coordinates for those points, and then we would hand plot those individual points on a piece of grid paper and, uh, and then from there we would develop our mapping. Uh, so now we can do stuff that used to take you know a week you know we can do now in, in basically hours you know less than a day in most instances. Today's surveying equipment builds on the framework of traditional transit instruments. Now the crew uses fully robotic machines called electronic total stations. For the new instruments we have a built-in electronic distance meter right in the instrument. So now we are not going out chaining dimensions. We just turn this to our prism on whatever point we want to measure to, hit a button on our data collector, and it will automatically shoot that distance. And it's actually shooting the dimension many times, I, I think in this instrument 3,000 times, and averages those dimensions before it will display that, that measured distance for us. And then once we've collected all our data in the field, with our data collector, we can bring that back to the office, connect it up to our computers at night, download our, the collected data into our, our database file, save that out as a comma delimited file, then we can bring it into our microstation or any CAD package somebody's using and have that uh, basically produce a, about a 75% drawing. When the original Willamette River Bridge was built in the early 1960s, Surveying equipment was slower and labor-intensive. Warren Neer was an ODOT crew chief in charge of the original bridge's survey team. Using a steel measuring tape and mechanical transit, the crew gathered all the information required for the engineering and construction of the bridge. Well, see, we didn't have the electronic equipment, and so it was uh, quite a lot different. So we set our um, instruments up and uh, we had to measure across the river by uh, uh, a mathematical uh, ways, uh, triangulation. Mm -hmm. And so it was a very, very accurate method used in uh, surveying. Warren's crew included three to five men at any given time, working together to gather precise measurements. Well, there was the transitman and, uh, and, a, and a head chainman. He was the fellow that took the head into the chain and he would go out uh, where the transitman showed him to go, stay on the line. The rear chainman would stay at the transit to hold the tape. And then depending on how brushy or hilly or whatever it was, there might be one or two other people that uh, uh, did the clearing, and we used machetes, brush hooks, mm -hmm. and uh, mostly those two tools to clear the pathway so that we could see through there with our instruments. Working with a traditional transit required more setup time and a steady platform to get measurements just right. If there was an obstacle out there, they would 
uh, take that into account. You know, it took a little thought about where they were setting the points and what they were doing out there. Warren built an impressive 33-year career with ODOT, serving as a survey chainman, an inspector, a transit man, and a scouting party chief. When he started his career, he had no formal training. I didn't know anything about engineering or surveying or highway construction, but it was such an interesting job that uh, we had lots of people that were very knowledgeable and they sh were more than glad to share their information. And I used to go over to their houses at night and learn how to do the mathematics and the basics of engineering and stuff. And uh, they were just really great. What Warren and his crew lacked in technology, they made up for in expertise. You know, during the course of this survey, we encountered a bunch of the monuments that ODOT set for the center line back in the 60s. And, and based upon our measurements, we were finding those monuments to be highly accurate. Uh, so they, they did a very good job given the tools that they had at the time. And so with our measurements, uh, you know, we basically confirmed that you know, they did do accurate work, and we continue to do accurate work to, to give the property owners, or in this case, ODA, you know, high quality products. The designers, builders, and surveyors of the new Willamette River Bridge have stood on the shoulders of people like Warren Neer and his crew. As the new bridge is built to carry millions of people over the next 100 years, this legacy will not be forgotten.